Components for Muzzle Loaders Used on African Game. William Hovey Smith, 2015. I'm the author of Extreme Muzzle Loading, and in this video I discuss both historic loadings and modern components that can be used on African game. Muzzle loading has undergone a remarkable evolution in the last few decades. Starting from round ball loads used in tremendously heavy guns that the early settlers in South Africa used for elephant and rhino, we now have progressed to muzzle loading loads that are fully as capable as any of the cartridge guns available today, including things like the 458 Winchester Magnum. It all started with the four bore. This monstrous round ball, which weighs 1,000 300 grains was used in tremendously heavy guns for rhinoceros, buffalo, and the like. They were effective. These guns killed. If the four bore was a little too formidable, then a hunter could go to the light and handy eight gauge, this one, and the eight gauge was available in double barrel guns. For the really a feat for those who could not stand to use a larger gun, and women, the 12 bore, 12 gauge round ball. Now I am shooting the 12 gauge round ball here on Plains game, and it is very effective for this class of game. It is approximately the same killing power at short range as a 30 out six. Next in the evolution of the round ball guns at the time of the American Civil War was the mini ball, which has a hollow base and an elongated slug. This enabled the gun to be reloaded very quickly, and the expansion of the gases expanded the metal here and sealed the bore and gave increased power and accuracy. This is a 58 caliber. These were also used in hunting guns in the 1850s. In North America, we no longer have elephants, not since the Pleistocene, but we do have large numbers of white-tailed deer. This is a little mini ball type bullet in 50 caliber, which is designed as a deer killer, comparatively lightweight, only about 300 grains or so. Uh, this bullet kills very effectively on white-tailed deer and would on game the size of Impala, Dick Dick, and so on. The next evolution in muzzle-loading ammunition came with the sabotted bullet. Now the sabot is French for shoe, sabot, and it is a plastic container for the projectile, which fits in like yay. You load both down the barrel, and the plastic actually grips the rifling in the gun. This completely seals the bore prevents any lead contact with the bore and gives you a very high velocity because you fully utilize the powder charge. None of it is blown by by use of a patch or whatever. The only problem with sabots is they are very difficult to load for the second shot and sometimes even for the first. The first doesn't usually matter because you do that at home. But if you've got a beastie dying and you need to put another load in it in a hurry, it's awful frustrating trying to force a sabotaged bullet down a filed bore. Plus, for best accuracy, the bore should be wiped between shots because this plastic residue actually comes off in the bore to some degree. To overcome that problem, a company by the name of Power Belt designed an altogether new bullet. This is it. It has the same plastic cup as the sabot, and this works as an effective gas seal. However, the lead in this bullet, it's copper plated, but it has a lead core, on firing expands and actually grabs the rifling. So the rifling is not really held to any great degree 
by the piece of plastic, and thus almost no plastic comes off in the bore. So these bullets can be loaded rapidly because they're under bore size, and you can reload one very quickly after a second shot. Now this is an approximately 300 grain bullet, and it's typically used in 50 caliber, and this is typical for uh, North American deer. This bullet is a dangerous game bullet. It is made by power belt. It uses a solid steel front, a lead midsection to grab the rifling in the barrel, and a plastic cup to enable the full powder charge to be utilized. This bullet, this bullet is as capable as a 458 Winchester Magnum when used in an appropriate load that ranges up to, say, 50 yards or so, which is where you would utilize a load like this. Another type of load was developed by Thompson Center, and it's the maxi ball. It's what I'm using in the pistol, and I took uh, two animals with that. And this is how I package the stuff for my use. Put it in a plastic tube, inside there's a number 11 cap for guns that use it, a 209 shotgun primer for guns that use those. This plastic component is used by night rifles, and without this plastic components, the modern night rifles cannot be made to fire. Then. We have two triple seven pellets. This is equivalent to 100 grains of black powder. And the 370 grain maxi ball. This is a very effective load, even when fired from a handgun. This load far exceeds the energies available from the 44 Magnum, for example. As you would expect, it does have considerable recoil. primers that are available to start these loads. These are number 11 caps. This one happens to be made by CCI and so far as I know is the hottest cap available today. Other good caps are made by RWS and Focci. 209 primers were designed for use in shotguns and these are used in many modern muzzle loaders. Knight uses a 209 primer, Thompson Center uses a 209 primer, and most modern inlines have a 209 primer firing mechanism. Triple seven pellets are a black powder substitute. They are made by Hodgson in the United States. One of these is equivalent to 50 grains of black powder. Now these are for use in inline guns only. And by inline guns, I mean modern bolt action and drop barrel guns, which the ignition components are in line like this. You have a 209 primer that fires, and the fire goes directly into the powder charge, hence in line, compared to a side lock where the cap may be sitting over one side of the barrel. So the hammer falls on the cap, the flash must go into the powder charge sideways, and then fire the powder charge. For those guns, traditional side lock muzzle loaders, one still must use black powder. Or there are Pyrodex powders, which may also be used. Pyrodex powder is an approved black powder substitute, as are clear shot and clean shot. However, no smokeless powders are to be used in any amount in any muzzle loaders. This black powder is of South African origin. Well, actually, I take that back. German origin. And sold in South Africa. It is FFG grade. In shooting this powder, I find that it is not as strong as the American powder that I'm using, although it's the same granulation. In a load, for example, that I developed in the U.S. that took 120 grains of powder, 
I must load 150 grains of this powder to get the same result. That takes care of rifle components. Now there are black powder shotguns too and some that are very capable indeed. The current record is held by the Knight TK2000. It's a shotgun specifically designed for turkey hunting. The Knight shotgun can take a charge of two and a quarter ounces of shot, which is a tremendous charge. And it also can take up to 120 grains of black powder, or power decks. And that will kill just about anything that you can find that will fly. Specialized components for black powder shotguns include wads like these. And obviously, if it's a shotgun, you need shot. This is exactly the same lead shot used in ordinary shot shells. This happens to be a particularly, uh, well, a fairly large shot, uh, number fives, that I brought over here, especially for guinea fowl. Uh, normally, we would use uh, sixes or so for small birds and so on. In North America, we must use non-toxic shot for waterfowling. So there are non-toxic shots. And these are sometimes made of uh, tungsten alloys. They give very heavy shot for their size. Naturally enough, this is called heavy shot. This is some very coarse heavy shot. And that would be used for coyotes, varmints, very large fowl, and such things. You load a muzzle-loading shotgun just like you would load a the shot shell of a regular shotgun, and that you use powder, wads, and shot to get the job done. You just load them in the barrel one component at a time. In conclusion, modern materials developed in North America used in muzzleloaders can now exceed the performance or equal it of any cartridge firearm out to about 100 yards. Beyond 100 yards, the added velocity of the modern cartridges actually makes a marked improvement in killing power. But at 100 yards and less, a muzzleloader with proper load and proper bullets can kill just as effectively as a cartridge gun. What one carries when hunting is what he needs to shoot his individual muzzleloaders. Now this is a un very unusual hunt in that I'm using three different guns. So obviously the normal person going out with a beastie with a single gun would not need all the material I'm carrying. With a smoothbore, we have a pocket full of stuff. And this consists of two charges of powder already pre-measured in tubes, a short starter to start the bullet, two lead round balls in a plastic sack, wads to put over underneath the balls, between the powder and the balls, use two of them, patching material to put around the balls when they're loaded, and a capper containing number 11 percussion caps. Also, a knife used to cut the patching material. Now this sort of material is what's used for any round ball rifle. Things are considerably simplified, however, 
when using the more modern inline guns. For example, this is a charge that contains everything you need to shoot the inline rifle. You have three triple seven pellets, a bullet, and the plastic jacket containing the primer. Here. Very compact unit. It's all you need to get it to fire. For the pistol, the same concept. Here. Well, this is another rifle load here. For the pistol, the same concept, except you don't use quite as much stuff. Two triple seven pellets. A preloaded wad underneath the bullet. And on the top, the bullet itself. There's also a primer contained in here, a 209 primer. So this is one complete load for the pistol. So if you preload your materials in plastic cylinders or plastic tubes like this, you can cut the amount of material you have to carry down to a minimum. Besides extreme muzzle loading, which contains details of these hunts, I also have backyard deer hunting and an ebook series on muzzle loading guns which includes muzzle loaders for hunters, shooting and maintaining your muzzle loader, hunting with muzzle loading shotguns and smoothbore muskets, and hunting big and small game with muzzle loading pistols. I also have a new series of business books and a profit series, the first of which is ideas for new businesses, and following is a little blurb about me and the book. Now, since this was recorded in 2005, there have been some changes in the muzzle-loading guns that are available. The Encore pistol, for example, is not. Now, for more information on Spear Safari's activities, you can go to their website. For information on my books, 450 videos, and other items, you can go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.